Hello, I'm Brett Knowles from PM Squared Consulting. This video is a walkthrough of the Upraise OKR use case example. Now, it's important to note that this video reviews our work based on our deep experience with OKRs and our experience with JIRA and Upraise. We have copied client work into our own JIRA environment to protect our clients' strategies and privacy. This is the first of two overviews. In this overview, we provide the core JIRA Upraise OKR journey. And in a follow-up, we will be quickly reviewing some of the peripheral Upraise uh, slash OKR solutions to illustrate our deep experience with APIs and connecting to core systems inside the client environment. So we'll start our review by looking at the overall dashboard. So this dashboard provides you, as you would think, an overall view of how the OKRs are progressing. So in the small sample base we have, we've created eight users, 20 objectives, 38 key results. And you can see that we have a mix between the OKRs being on track and some lagging and some at risk. We can also quickly see how we're progressing and how many are at risk and where they are within the key strategic objectives. And we'll take a look at these later on. So that's the starting point. Let's go over now and browse the OKRs that we've created in this environment. Now, this view basically gives us a laundry list of all the OKRs that have been created. And obviously there are multiple pages and this can get quite complicated in some client environments. So often you'll want to choose something like, for example, maybe I want to choose only a time period or maybe look for particular users that I can uh, filter so I can take a look at my objectives that I'm personally responsible for. Maybe I'm doing a leadership and I just want to understand which ones are at risk, which ones are abandoned, that kind of thing. Or maybe I'm running a team and I just want to see what the team objectives are. Now, the way to read this is that on the objectives, if they are company objectives, they'll have a brown C. If they're team objectives, they'll have a T for team. And if they're individual, they'll have an I. So we can quickly filter this down so it becomes useful for either running my team, running my organization, seeing at-risk objectives, and so forth. So in this case, Let's say I want to take a look at only the company OKRs. And within the company OKRs, if there are objectives or key results beneath it, there's a little chevron. So we're going to go in and take a look at F1, increased profitability. Now, F1, increased pro profitability, is a corporate level objective. And as I drill into it, I can begin to see what are the key results which are associated with it and also what are the sub-objectives which are linked to it. So those sub-objectives could either be corporate level, team level, department, regional, and so forth. This allows us to begin creating a parent-child relationship. And within the key results, of course, we have all the high-level detail that we'd want in terms of goals, current status, progress, uh, and we can even weight them. Now, this is super critical as far as we're concerned because not all key results are equally important. And so by prioritizing them, we can guide teams and employees to work on the things which are of greatest strategic importance to the organization. So if we're to take a look at another one, let's say um, I1, fast turnaround time, you'll see there's no Chevron because there's no direct key results beneath it. But inside of I1, we have a series of other linked objectives. And so we can begin, again, seeing the parent-child relationship and what those objectives look like. In this case, there's a mix of activities that different people are working on towards this goal. And if we take a look at, let's say, one of those objectives, Karen's objective of innovating new loading methods, we can drill into that 
and within that begin seeing the next level of detail down. So within that overall objective of innovating new loading methods, we can see things like designing new loading cart, practice different loading formations, and so on. And uh, inside of each of those, we are drilling down in the individual level into specific activities. And you can see in this case, they actually link back to the JIRA activities. So we're monitoring things in JIRA, which aggregates back up to the uh, individual's objectives, and those aggregate back up to the team objectives, and those aggregate back up to corporate. So we can begin to see that drill down hierarchy. And we have this navigation pane on the right that always allows us to see where we're at and quickly move uh, up and down the hierarchy without having to uh, click backwards and forwards. Now, another way to take a look at that hierarchy view, as opposed to using the quick nav view on the left, is take a look at the hierarchy view as a report itself. Now, the hierarchy view gives us the overall scorecard and we can drill down by objective into more and more detail. So in this case, the overall objective is to increase profitability. To do that, we've got two sub-objectives. One is I want to work with fewer planes and I want more passengers. If I look at more passengers inside that objective, we've got two key things. To get more passengers, either my planes need to be more on time or I need the lower ticket price. If I go into lower ticket price, I can begin to see that the most important thing is about fast turnaround time. And fast turnaround time itself goes into four, uh, five key activities, which is about focusing on redesign, getting the galley stock faster, uh, getting uh, training hours per person and innovating the loading process. So this allows us to begin to drill into the activities that our people are doing. And of course, at any point in time, we can drill into those objectives to get more detail. And again, uh, that links back to the same framework we, we used before, which is elegant. It allows people to quickly learn how to use the system. So that's the hierarchy view. And you know, we can expedite the hierarchy view by choosing specific objectives that we, we might want to drill into. So if I want to go straight down to, uh, for example, uh, fast turnaround time, I can just start off the hierarchy at that level and drill through. We can also, again, use this to run production meetings so that we focus on the most important things or whatever the topic of that meeting is. So I want to add a quick narrative at this point on how we get data into the overall upraise solution. Now, there are several ways that we've found popular with our clients. One, obviously, is through the JIRA interface. As projects are being managed and monitored through JIRA, the data automatically comes in, as I've shown you, as it linked through. We also integrate this through APIs to common tools in the client environment, such as Slack or Hangouts. What this allows us to do is to both push and pull data, push ideas to the users about changes in their objectives and key results, but also pull data back from those other sources. In some clients, we've moved to, for example, smartphones where individuals can be recording their activities from their smartphone and sending it in. So there's a whole bunch of hard data that we use in OKRs, but there's also soft data. Soft data comes from things like exit interviews, quarterly performance reviews, uh, other conversations that we have through things like 360 feedback, peer reviews, or even just ongoing compliments and kudos, which are handed back and forth. So through either the APIs or the which link to other core systems or HRIS systems or some other functionality that's included in Uprise. And so I'm just going to quickly touch on that. So I'm going to go on the left here over to the forms area. And inside the forms area, you can obviously set up all the standard sort of forms that you'd expect to have, 360s, uh, job interviews, and so on. And there's a lot of uh, sophistication that's there. The only thing I want to touch on is it's, cr it's incredibly important we found to have consistency on how these are built. So, for example, we feel that 
all within a client environment, they need to agree on the reporting standard. So in this example, every question is phrased in a way that allows the user to give a one to five star response, as opposed to some being a Likert scale, some being five stars, some being narratives. And this makes the whole process more elegant. And I'm touching on this only as a design feature inside of Operas, you've got infinite variety on how you might want to do this. We're just saying based on best experience, this is where we guide clients. But we also try to use as much existing systems and information as possible. So there's a quick overview of the Operas solution. Hopefully this gives you some ideas of what is possible inside your environment. And we look forward to having a conversation on how we can help you create your Jira Operas environment.